Gustave Nobel was born on October 21, 1833 in Stockholm, Sweden. He died December 10 in San Remo, Italy, 1896. He was a Swedish chemist, engineer and manufacturer who invented dynamite and some other powerful explosives. Alfred Nobel also founded the Nobel Prize. He came from a literate family. From his father, Immanuel Nobel, he learned the basics of engineering. When Immanuel got a job at St. Petersburg, the whole family had to move there in 1842. Alfred was educated by tutors, and already at 16, he was a competent chemist and fluent in five languages. Alfred visited Germany, France, and the United States during the following years. In Paris, he worked in the private laboratory of the famous chemist called Professor T. J. Pelouse. The professor had a young assistant, Asiano Sobrero, who three years earlier had invented a highly explosive liquid, nitroglycerin. It was produced by mixing glycerin with a sulfuric and nitric acid. But nitroglycerin was thought of as too dangerous to be useful. Alfred became very interested in this dangerous substance and how it could be put into practical use in construction work. Alfred, here is your tea. Thank you, Ruth. How is your work going? Well, not so good. I mean, how can nitroglycerin be put into practical use? And how can the safety problems be solved? And I mean, how can the detonation be controlled? Before the dynamite was invented, the only comparable explosive existing was black powder, or gunpowder. The oldest type of gunpowder consists of sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. Gunpowder, though, was the only existing theory before nitroglycerin and then dynamite. The existing theory, noble use, when creating dynamite was the substance nitroglycerin. The view on nitroglycerin, though, was that it was a very unsecure and unpredictable substance. According to Niels Ringetz, Alfred Nobel started his experimentation with nitroglycerin in 1863. He began the manufacturing of the liquid explosive. After several explosions, one causing the death of his youngest brother, Emil, along with four other people, the Swedish government realized that the production of nitroglycerin was an extremely dangerous task. The Swedish government therefore forbade further experimentation with nitroglycerin within the Stockholm city limits, and Nobel therefore continued his experimentation on a barge anchored on Lake Mälaren. Alfred Nobel's aim was now to create nitroglycerin that was safe to handle. By a chance discovery, he found that by mixing nitroglycerin with kieselger, a silicon packing material, he could create a paste which could then be inserted into drilled holes. In 1867, Alfred Nobel patented his material under the name of dynamite. He also had to be able to detonate the dynamite, and he therefore invented the detonator. The detonator would ignite when lighting the fuse, and then set off the dynamite. When dynamite entered the market, it soon took over the explosive industry, as it was a safer alternative to gunpowder. However, gunpowder was used for military purposes. Many people took on a safer view on dynamite, and the use became more common. Is dynamite still used today? No. Today we use Dynamex, which is a modern type of dynamite. What is the difference? In uh, Dynamex, nitroglycerin is fully replaced by dinitroglycol. What is dinitroglycol? It has a lower freezing point uh, and a lower price, but it has still the same sensitivity and blasting technology. Welcome to Science Show. I am Rachel Harrison. And I am Elise Eplin. And today we're here with Laser Torken to talk about dynamite. Why didn't the dynamite prove to be efficient in war purposes? 
Well, actually, the U.S. explored whether the dynamite was successful and efficient in war purposes. But after the dynamite, uh, after the concussion from the blast of the dynamite prematurely exploded it, it proved to be inefficient and not mm. useful in war purposes. So therefore, it was not very often used in war purposes. Oh, Interesting. Cool. I understand. But uh, did some people use the dynamite to revolutionize against almighty government? Y Yes, the dynamite was actually used by revolutionaries and other forms of uh, terrorists and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I and such as? So, and for example, we have uh, Alex, uh, sorry, Alexander II. He was assassinated in 1881 oh, okay. with the usage of, yeah. uh, of the dynamite. Um, can, can you tell us a bit about what actually what Nobel wanted this dynamite to be used for? What was, what was the purpose behind it? Alfred Nobel actually stated in his will that uh, the dynamite was not supposed to be used uh, for the purpose of assassinating other people. Mm -hmm. He wanted the dynamite to be used um, in order to like simplify construction work, such as building bridges, uh, tunnels, um, building roads, and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Oh. Okay. And he also wanted to uh, um, simplify the mining business when you wanted to. <laughs> oh, I understand. So he didn't want to harm people with this invention. He just wanted to do good. <laughs> that was everything <laughs> for a science show. My dynamite will sooner lead to peace than a thousand world conventions. As soon as men will find that in one instant whole armies can be utterly destroyed, they surely will abide by golden peace.